Hi guys, welcome to episode 2, part 1 of Restoration for Beginners, Datsun 280Z project. In this episode, we're going to show you how you can upgrade or restore the front disc brakes on your S30 Datsun. The complete guide to your front disc braking system will be split off into three separate parts since we have a lot of material to cover. This part 1 of the episode will serve as an introduction and here we'll go over the scope of the project, give you a quick guide to your braking system and components, discuss the popular upgrade or restoration options, and finally, list the required parts and provide cost estimates for the project. Check out the video description section to navigate to the parts that interest you. If you're looking to get your hands dirty right away, disassembling the old brake parts off the car, you can skip to the next video of the episode, part 2. If you're looking to see how all the shiny new parts are put together, skip one more to part 3. I have a 280Z here as my project car, but this should be relevant for the earlier 240Zs, 260Zs, and the later 280Z X Datsuns as well. The three main components that we'll be replacing in this video are the brake pads, there are two on each side, the calipers that house the brake pads, and the rotors which is this rotating circular disc. Here's a quick sneak peek at what our final product will look like. You can see that we've changed the OEM rotors to slotted and vented ones, got some new brake calipers, and installed new brake pads and hardware. We've also had a chance to do some cleanup and painting to make it all look pretty. You can see my wheel hubs are a bit rusty and beat up here, and I will have to replace or repair those eventually, but um, for this video we'll just go ahead and ignore that for now. Before we get to doing any work, uh, let's first cover the main components of your disc braking system. Your brakes work through a hydraulic system that uses the brake fluid to activate various components throughout the car. Of course, pressing the brake pedal is how the driver activates the brakes. The movement of the brake pedal starts the process to compress the brake fluid. Here on the other side of the firewall is a brake booster. Think of it as power steering for your brakes. It exaggerates the force you're physically putting on the brake pedal to make it easier for your brake. The next is a master cylinder, which is like a reservoir that holds the brake fluid, but it also pumps the brake fluid to the different wheels. You can see that there are two reservoirs. The bigger one is for the front brakes and the smaller one is for the rear brakes. Then the brake fluid goes through something called the NP valve, which is a mechanism that prevents the premature locking up of the rear wheels. The brake lines continue channeling the pressurized brake fluid to each of the wheels at this point, and pretty much all of the brake lines throughout the car are made from hard metal tubing and aren't really supposed to move. The exception to this is the rubber brake hose. It's made of more flexible materials because it connects to the moving wheel hub and assembly. Some people might change this rubber brake hose out with a stainless steel braided line for a firmer brake pedal feel. Finally, the brake fluid pressure gets delivered to the calipers, which forces out the pistons within them, which presses the brake pads against the spinning rotor, squeezing it to slow it down. The rear brakes on this car are not disc brakes, but are instead something called drum brakes. We won't be covering those today, but look out for a future episode on the subject. So what should we do with the brakes on a 40 year old Datsun? Let's take some time to discuss the four of the most popular options that Datsun Z restorers can choose from when it comes to front disc brakes. First option is keeping the car as stock and original as possible. Some restorers might rebuild their calipers if they're in decent shape. You can buy caliper rebuilding kits like this one shown here for much, much less than buying new calipers. Depending on the condition of the rotors, they can also be reused after being resurfaced and cleaned. This option can be the cheapest option since reusing your old parts where you can is obviously cheaper than buying all new parts. However, it can also be the most time consuming and you do need some more specialized tools, like an air compressor to pop out the caliper piston, and you might need access to some machining equipment as well. The second option, which is a route that I'll be taking, 
is retaining the original specs of the car but buying new replacement parts. I bought remanufactured calipers for this project, which are identical to the calipers that I'll be taking off, but they've already been rebuilt and come with brand new hardware like pins and bleeder valves. You can also buy new aftermarket rotors that are the same size as the ones that you'll be pulling off so that no modification is required to bolt them on. This option can be just as cost effective if you're able to sell your old calipers and rotors that you no longer need. The third popular option is to do a Toyota disc brake conversion. This is essentially taking the four piston calipers from a Toyota 4x4, which should improve the braking performance over the two piston stock calipers on the Datsuns. Also, this should be mostly a bolt-on affair since both of the brake systems were made by the same manufacturer named Sumitomo. I believe the only modification that is required is either cutting the dust cover to fit the bigger calipers or getting rid of the dust cover altogether. This option can also be a cost-effective upgrade, but I decided not to go this route in the interest of keeping the car in mostly um, original specs, and I felt like the brake system didn't really need to be upgraded, it just needed to be restored. The fourth option is getting a big brake kit. The most popular manufacturer for the S30 Datsun seems to be the Willwood setup, which gets you uh, slotted and drilled rotors, bigger calipers, and comes with caliper mounting brackets and stainless steel braided brake lines, basically everything you will need. This is by far the most expensive option as prices can be higher than a thousand dollars. And you will pretty much also need to upgrade your master brake cylinder and get new wheels if yours aren't at least 15 inches to fit the bigger setup. This option is really only necessary if you're planning to build a track car or have an unlimited budget. Needless to say, this is not really a good option for what I'm looking for. Here's all the parts that you'll need for this project and the cost estimates. First, the calipers. Here's the calipers I ordered. These are remanufactured calipers I've ordered online for $50 each. They're basically rebuilt used calipers, but they've been already installed with all new piston rings and bleeder valves and all new hardware are provided with the kit as well. Here is the brake pad retaining clip. Here's a caliper pin and a retaining clip for the caliper pin. You can see that these are Sumitomo branded, which tells me that they are um, exactly the same as the calipers that I'll be pulling off the car. Here are the brake pads. This is an area where you really don't have to look for the OEM parts. I bought StopTex semi-metallic street pads that should increase the braking performance over the stock ceramic pads. These pads were around $40 for the entire set. These brake pads also came with all new hardware, which are obviously redundant since the calipers also included a new set. Lastly, the brake rotors. These are StopTech rotors. These are the same size as the stock rotors, but they're slotted and drilled, which should improve the braking performance by providing better heat dissipation over the stock rotors. These were $65 each. So let's go over the final cost estimate. Like I said, the calipers cost around $50 for each, so it's $100 for the pair. Brake pads cost $40 for all four, two for each caliper. Rotors were around $65 each, and there was two of them, so $130. Taxes and shipping uh, all together is around $30, so you should be expecting the total cost of the parts to be around $300. In the next video, we'll go over the step-by-step -step guide of how to disassemble your front disc brakes, and in part 3, we'll cover the installation of the new and cleaned parts.